Zach Fieser here with Alta3 Research. Let's take an instance of Ansible and make it communicate with InfoBlox, which is behind a RESTful API. Here I have a Python 3.6.9 installed and Ansible 2.10 that's current as of the recording of this video. If I want Ansible to be able to communicate with InfoBlox, I need to install the Python InfoBlox client. I can do that with pip. That's done, I can hop into InfoBlox management GUI. I'm gonna clear out two networks that I currently have created. They're gone. I now have a clean machine. Let's hop over to an Ansible playbook that I want to run. Up at the top, I have play level information. And name itself is just metadata. It's the name of my, my play. Here I have hosts and connection. Uh, they're set that way because I just installed that client and I want Ansible to speak through it. This vars section is a way to pass dynamic information into my playbook. Within the playbook, you can see I have these double mustache bracket, double quotes. Those are all variables, and those variables will get filled in by these values. So the values, the keys are on the left, the dynamic values are on the right. So for example, any place you see domain, you actually see campuswest.local. vars underscore files is a way to pull in an external file. vars infoblocks.creds is a simple dictionary. The value NIOS provider is mapped to a password, a username, and a uh, IP address. Um, that's all that's in vars file, and that's encrypted. Uh, tasks are what I want to do. You can see I have one called NIOS Zone. I have NIOS Network. I have a debug, and I have an NIOS host record. These are actually calls to Python scripts that are pre-written. You pull these in with Ansible. It's kind of the point of it. And then you sort of define how you want that script to run. These are these indented values. And you can see the way I want these scripts to run. I have written in a dynamic manner in that I'm invoking variables uh, to get my work done. So I'm going to run this command here, Ansible playbook. I'm going to call the playbook that we just looked at. Dash E means extra variable. This has a very high uh, precedence level, the highest. So the value for host I want to rewrite as toffee crunch, and ask vault pass is simply I want to define a uh, provide a password for that encrypted file that I'm calling. Here I run it. Anything yellow means a change occurred. Skipping is good. Uh, that debug tag, which or, or uh, module. Uh, had a verbosity parameter on it, which means if we wanted that to run, we'd have to throw a verbosity flag, which we didn't, so that's fine. Uh, here you see two green tasks. That's because our DNS zone was created. Our network's already there. We just wanted the new host, which you see here is Blizzard Heat. We created the host Blizzard Heat. So if I hop into the uh, management software, I'm going to hit refresh. And you see I have two little purple dots. They're the two hosts that got created, Blizzard Heat and Toffee Crunch. If I go back to this like homepage here, you can see the network, 192.168.200. That's the network we wanted to create. Uh, if I highlight these little dots, you can see, yep, there's Toffee Crunch and there's Blizzard Heat on campuswest.local. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you need the playbook, you can check the bottom of the screen. We have links there that will connect you to the code. While you're doing that, why don't you hit subscribe? And as always, if you do need training for yourself or your enterprise, check out alta3.com.